peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. My, how far we've come. Jesus, full of the Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. This empty wilderness from is the theological and the physical opposite of the Garden of Eden. It's a vis- visualization of just how God's good creation was so corrupted after it was subjected Satan's destructive lies. And now Jesus, the son of Adam, the son of God, coming straight from his baptism in the Jordan and armed with his father's affirmation, this is my beloved son, embarks on a spirit-led journey that will put him in the wilderness. And with the devil's attacks and ultimately brings him to the cross to bring salvation to you and a restoration of paradise that was. First Christmas, now Lent, soon Easter. And all of that is to show us our sin and to show us our Savior. This place Zion Lutheran Church, this Christian church, is here for one reason. For God to make known to you and to remove your sin. That's the business of the church. That's why you're here, or at least it should be. The purpose of Lent, of Christ, of the church, is to take away your sin. God acting forgiving, reconciling, doing everything for you because of your sin. The devil tempts man sin. Sins bring, sin brings death. If we don't think sin is serious, deadly serious, then we don't really need the church, do we? If we can't take our, if we can take care of ourselves then we don't really need a Savior, do we? If we don't take our sin and our need for a Savior serious, we end up going through the motions of religion and nothing here really interests you. That kind of thinking is the reason why the pews aren't overflowing with people this morning. And we dare not redefine church as a social club or a charitable organization where you can do nice things for people. We dare not think that we are all fine and good and squared away. It's those other people who need our charity or our deliverance. It is certainly true that there are people in need of mercy and charity. That is certainly true and to hear God's word. But if we ever lose sight of the fact that we are poor, miserable sinners who are not worthy to be in God's presence like we confessed earlier in the service, that of all people we are the most sinful, the most guilty, the most unclean, that my sin, whether it's in secret or out in the public, out in the open, that drives me out of heaven, that hell is real, where you will never escape your terror, if we ever lose sight of the need for deliverance from our sin and our children's need for the deliverance from their sin and our co-workers and our friends and our neighbors need deliverance from their sin, if we ever lose sight of that, if we ever lose sight of the impending tragedy that awaits us if we are without our Savior, then the church has lost its purpose. God put this church, Zion Lutheran Church, here in the city of Valley Park, in this very place, for you, so that he can remove your sin. And that's why he is here now. The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart, 
for the most important reason of your life. So, a pastor, if he is to speak truthfully, must stand before all you good people here this morning who have come here today and announce what is true about all of us. That sin has infected us with death. You can't escape it. It's festering in its deepest parts. It's working all the way down through you. Now, of course, you can try to defend yourselves. Say you're mostly good deep down, right? But if we really mean that, if we really believe that, then we don't understand sin at all, do we? Because sin rots you from the inside. It perverts what it touches. And it touches each and every one of us. Have you ever been sick? Have you ever mistreated someone in your family or a friend or a neighbor or a stranger? What grudges are you still holding even this morning as you sit here? Have you ever rejected someone or been rejected or know the tears because of it? Have you ever suffered an accident or caused an accident and you're still living with the consequences of that? These things are not God's judgment on you for specific sins. But they are indications of the sin that is on all people, all of creation, all of us. It's like a thick residue that can't be washed off. Your sin is evident by your pain by your weakness, by your anger, by your bitterness this morning. It's what makes a person want to shoot and kill somebody because of where they parked their vehicle. If your marriage is perfect, your children are perfect, your health is perfect, your house is perfect, work is perfect, If nothing ever breaks down, if nothing frustrates you or disappoints you or hurts you, if everything is milk and honey for you this morning, then relax. You're safe. Sin has not polluted you. Apparently, you'll live forever, even without Christ. But if your life is not perfect, your health is not perfect, your family isn't perfect, and you are frustrated it all, as all get out by all the things that you can't make perfect, then something deadly is causing it. It isn't God. God promises to be near you in that chaos, that imperfection that surrounds you. God promises that those who believe in Him will not be put to shame. And God's love is there for you. He promises a new life to come out of this death. And when that chaos and that hatred and that sickness and that stress, do you know that 8 out of 10 people in the United States today consider their job to be very stressful? 8 out of 10. And when death has invaded your life and your family, then recognize it for what it is. It is sin. And sin has corrupted you and it's corrupted those around you. And you're tainted by it. And condemned by it. And you're caught in this wilderness, in this wasteland. And you're lost in it. Forever. Unless. But Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Look beside you in the wilderness. There's Jesus. Also feeling alone, starving, miserable, suffering, and hunted and attacked by Satan, seeking whom he may devour. And at Jesus' most vulnerable moment, you know what that's like, don't you? At Jesus' most vulnerable moment, Satan's temptation of Jesus begins. And as the book of Hebrews tells us, Jesus was tempted in every way. 
And this is Jesus on his way to dying also. And why is he here? He's never sinned. His body, his flesh and bone, heart and soul are pure and holy. Why is he here in this barren place, hungry, being tempted, suffering like this? It's because you are here. Jesus couldn't stay in heaven's peace glory while you suffer. He's come to seek and to save the lost. And he suffers the hunger and the pain that you suffer. He suffers the condemnation that was meant for you. If you are to die, he must die too in order to bring you back from the dead. He loves you too much to leave you in the wilderness alone against Satan. And while this world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will, Jesus is by your side upon the plain where you are and where the fight is. And Jesus fights that battle by hanging on a cross, rising from the dead, ascending into heaven. He holds the field victorious. And something more is happening here too. Where Jesus walks in the desert, there's new life. Your life. Life from heaven. From God to you. Like a leafy green tree, heavy with fruit in the middle of the desert where you didn't expect it. A tree of life to eat from. The Garden of Eden has long gone. And he is a spring of life-giving water, bubbling up, as John tells us, in the middle of your de desert, shouting out defiantly against Satan and this drought that surrounds you. Jesus shouts his word, you are forgiven. Jesus suffers. Jesus starves. Jesus wanders in the wilderness for one reason, and it's because you are here. But he's not just here with you, just to say, hey, this is pretty bad, isn't it? He's here to take you out, to recreate you, to take you to heaven, to his Father. And that's why the Holy Spirit led him to the spot, in, to your spot in the wilderness. And so he brings life down from heaven to this spot. He brings food from heaven, healing for you, for your heart, mind your heart, your bruised body and soul, the whole of you. Because sin destroys what God created and allows death to claim you, but Christ heals you of that death, forgives you of all your sin, and perfects you once again. His water is the water that washes away that residue. His water is the water that will save you. And so he says, I baptize you in the name of of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we call upon that name. And His food is the only food that will nourish you to life everlasting. And so He says, take and eat. And this is my body for you. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Here is life from heaven. Here is deliverance from Satan and all of his works and all of his ways. Here is cleansing, washing of your sin. And this is why your God is in the desert. Christ is with us in our wilderness. Why his body, the church, is here in this place and why you are here this morning at this moment in time. This life, this deliverance, this cleansing is yours today. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim this morning because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And what is our response to such great a gift? We should fear 
trust, and love God. For those who are in Christ Jesus, it is a way of life for us to fear and to trust, to fear the justice of God against our sinful flesh, but to trust that payment for our sin has been made. Has been made at the cross. And we count the love of God as the greatest blessing that we can have today. And following our Savior, walking through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.